Hello, builders, parents, grandparents, and collectors. Welcome to the Creation Evaluation Station. On this episode, we are going to be evaluating this big boy. It's uh, Lloyd's um, Golden Ultra Dragon. Um, if you're not familiar with my channel here, just a reminder that uh, I do in-depth reviews of models and construction kits, both new and old, mostly Lego, other products as well. I also do reviews and discussions of other creative works, such as movies, video games, and cartoons. So, this is going to be a big set, so it's probably going to be a long video. On the bottom, there are timestamps here, embedded in the real red line here, and also down in the description that you can use to skip around to see the parts that you're most interested in. Or you can use them as bookmarks to come back at a later date and finish watching the video. We cover a lot of stuff, parts, leftovers, there's the actual review, the evaluation, and the figures, all that. and. Uh, you might not be interested in seeing all of that. So uh, you can jump around and look at that. But let's get to the details of this set before we go open it up. It's set number 71774. It's for ages 9 and up. Um, and has 989 pieces. Quite large. Um, oh, and it, it sells for $149.99 on the LEGO website. There will be links down below if you want to check it out. Um, if you're interested or want to see other pictures of it or anything like that, I, I show quite a bit in the video. Um, it was just released here in the summer of 2022, so they should still have it on hand. If for some reason they're out of stock, they'll probably be back in stock shortly there with the uh, the supply shortage things have settled down from that and uh, they should probably have it back in shortly because they'll be uh, making more brand new sets you know lifetime of the Lego sets probably two years I think maybe less maybe more depending on the set as well but this is a big boy, big dragon. Let's look at that picture once again, really close. The back, it's very golden, and they added special golden effects, especially in the front of the box there. Um, very golden. <laughs> Quite a few figures in it, as you can see. So let's open it up, go check it out, and put it together. Here we have the contents of the box. Unlike the robots, we are going back to a plastic bag here, but we got a really thick uh, magazine-sized uh, instruction booklet that goes the long way with the bind here. Um, we have bag one, bag two, bag three, bag four, bag five, bag six, bag seven only seven bags but they all seem pretty full um, there is one more bag and that is of course the uh, golden weapons bag which this all counts as one piece so if there is one of these weapons in any set you get you're gonna get this whole bag full of parts which is really nice and yeah that is it there's not quite as many bags as I thought, but it still looks like a lot of pieces. Before we look at the contents of bag one, I thought we'd start off with the contents of the weapons bag. Uh, as I said, you get all of these even if only one weapon is needed for the construction of the set. So you'll have lots of these uh, with just simply one set. And with more sets, you're going to have tons and tons of these. Um, moving down, we of course got our brick separator, which is always in the first bag. 
We have a purple round piece. Definitely has some interesting colors in here. And that turquoise piece. These are parts of the dragon. They might be the insides. Although these might not be the dragon parts. There is a small build for a throne. Got a bunch of blue parts. A lot of plates. Small plates. A lot of pieces in this bag, period. We got a bunch of different swords. Including the crystal swords. We got our two Oni figures in here. Lloyd and uh, the Crystal King. Um... Like I said, a lot of plates and stuff. Have a lot of small pieces in here. Different variety. Some of these crystal, uh, clear crystal pyramid pieces, whatever you want to call them. Some more of these crystals as well. That is bag one. There's quite a bit here. Here is the contents of bag two. And although you've seen these before, don't think we've seen them in gold. And the same goes for these. I actually haven't seen these before, but even if they aren't from our f regular pieces, uh, first time seeing them in them in gold. I mean, they're basically extensions off the nose cone piece here. Um, we also got these hinges up here, which on first glance I thought was regular pieces, but I don't remember them having that like um, line there in between in the middle there um, maybe this is a newly designed part um, for better structure not sure maybe I just never realized it because they're usually black and those are white so that the line shows up <laughs> kind of strange um, but yeah some new pieces oh and in these gold there was a couple of these in the last bag as well not as many as in this one forgot to mention that um, you know, you probably saw it because I do cover everything and talk about it. And we got coin here. And a bunch of smaller pieces. Not quite as many pieces as the last bag, but uh, still a good amount. Some interesting ones. Is at that. On to bag three. Lots of golden parts in here, including these fancy pieces. Big old gold sword, a lot of hinges, some of the new hinge pieces, a lot of studs and side pieces, gold, 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 a little bit of white, gold, gold, gold. What do you expect for the golden dragon? More golden pieces, we got some crystal pieces here, probably belong to this guy's weapon here. Brute or warrior? I don't. Let's see. The warriors have two. No, he's a warrior. The brutes have two crystal hands. That's right. Yeah, that's bag number three. Here we have bag four. We have quite a few hinges, quite a few dragon heads. Roar! Got a bunch of other pieces too, including tons of studs on side pieces. And a whole bunch of small golden parts here. Ingots, plates, these weird corner plates. We also have some transparent parts. One by two blue, one one by two orange, one one by two yellow. We also have a bunch of yellow uh, cheese wedge pieces. We have some clear blue pyramids and clear orange pyramids. And Zane is over here. Yay! A lot of little pieces in here and a lot of studs on side pieces and a lot of bigger pieces as well. There's a lot here. Here we have a bag five and a lot more golden pieces. Big surprise. Got some of those new armor pieces in gold. Nice, nice. Um, some more of these new joints. Very nice. A lot of other studs on side pieces again. Some other bricks and plates and things. Bunch of couple of black pegs and a couple of the blue pegs with the 
rods on the ends. We have a uh, Benchstone Warrior. Nope, I think this one's a brute. Yeah, I think that one's a brute. I am boot. Yep, it's more of these uh, light blue colors, which you'll never see because they're part of the inner, inner parts. That is bag five. We're over halfway done. Here we have bag six, and we have some very interesting, very large oops, studs on side pieces here. Six studs long. Pretty cool. Need those for bigger projects for sure. A lot of golden pieces. Got some more hinges, more golden pieces. And this nougat colored stuff. Um, we got some bunch of Technic bricks here. Some other plates. Kai is in here. More gold pieces, a lot of small ones. A lot of these in white and a few of these in that nougat color. A lot of these white locks. It's so probably the feet. If you want to know where your feet, your, your parts count is, there you go. All these little tiny pieces. <laughs> um, and it doesn't always feel like it's such a big set uh, putting it together, but you see all these little pieces, you know why. Here is the seventh and final bag, and I believe we have the wing parts in here. So we have six of these golden blade sword pieces, which I believe come part of the um, wings. These Ninjago spinner pieces. It's more gears, a lot of Technic stuff in this uh, bag, the last bag. So I'm pretty sure it's the wings. Got some interesting brackets there, some really interesting brackets. I don't think I've seen these before. Probably exist, I don't have too many Technic sets. Um, also comes with tires, which the wheels are over here. And these Technic pieces, uh, I'm curious to see how this all goes together. Um, can be fun. And along with the other Technic pieces, we have pins, pins, and more pins. Um, a different types and varieties and colors. And these red ones, I don't know what these red ones are different than these gray ones. Probably something going on. And we also have another Vegstone Warrior and Jay is in here as well. And this is the very last of bag. Let's go finish this. Here are our leftover parts for this set. Um, quite a bit of odds and ends. A lot of transparent uh, pieces that were you know, little pyramids and cheese wedges. Um, other dots and things. We also got some horns, uh, some rods and different colors and sorts of things. We also have a lot of golden swords because each of our ninja had a golden sword and they left us a duplicate for each one and one crystal sword extra as well. On top of that, we have our leftover golden weapons. Now this set used quite a bit, so there isn't quite as many left over, but there's still some um, for you to use for whatever. And of course, our brick separator. Of course, why not? We're going to start with the bad guys with this set. Um, I actually have more good guys than bad guys. I don't know if I can do all the good guys in one go either. Um, but uh, let's start with these guys. Um, we've got uh, Crystal King here, and then we have what is it? Oh, I can't remember which one's which. The two-armed guy is the brute. So, we have one brute and two warriors here. Now you can tell because the brutes have two crystal arms, which he does. And while well, these have only one, actually. Oh, excuse me. No, there's two brutes and one warrior. Uh, that's kind of strange because they usually give them different weapons. That's why I got confused. I think that's how the instructions went, though. That's how I put them together. Because um, they were all in separate bags, too, so they weren't, like, all together. So, uh, hmm, that's interesting. But besides that, let's take off all their weapons and stuff and uh, take a closer look at their prints.
we got all their gear off and uh, see their printing on the, their torsos and legs and toes. Although uh, Crystal King here does not have any printing on his toes. Um, you can see here, these are the brutes with their two arms. And you notice there's more crystal on their chest than with the, the, the warrior here. And uh, that's another way you can tell the difference. I guess the brutes are more powerful because they have more crystal, I think. I'm not sure. Maybe the warriors are more powerful because they've got better formed bodies. Not sure. <laughs> I haven't seen the show, like I've said before. But it's fun to think about. And um, before I go any further turning it around here, uh, the Crystal King, that is the other part of his chest piece. There you can't see because the way this blocks it off. It's an interesting looking upper chest piece. It looks like there's a also drag in there um, but this this lower chest piece is really cool too because it looks looks like it's got a rib group cage there that's pretty cool um, we'll put that back on and he's got a nice looking scowling face there but we'll turn it around oops maybe we will there we go and you can see that the, the back there is no printing, and it doesn't overlap the bottom, but there you can still see that the, those ribs wrap around. And he's got no uh, back face, although he does have some printing back there. Um, nothing too fancy. And here are our warriors, or our one warrior and two brutes. And similar theme goes along the back, and it looks just as nice printed. No printing on the back of the legs, but, you know... Don't really need that anyways. But yeah. There we have our back, guys. Good mighty spiffy. Here are all our characters packed onto this uh, one plate. And uh, looking really nice and golden. <laughs> Gold is definitely a good theme in this set. Um, we uh, definitely see it. Um, first we have Golden Oni Lloyd and I hope this is not a spoiler um, because I don't understand what it is or why he's this way um, but it is what it is I guess and uh, yeah it's kind of cool looking just confusing to me <laughs> uh, and then our other four basic original ninjas are here um, we have uh, Golden Ninja um, Zane, Golden Ninja Kai, Golden Ninja Cole, and Golden Ninja Jay. Um, these are not original figures. You can get these in all four of them in the uh, the uh, Crystal King's Tower set. And they're also interspersed throughout the other sets as well. So, they aren't original, but Lloyd definitely is. Um, I kind of sucks that we don't just have a Golden Ninja Lloyd. Um, there is a, a, a another Lloyd figure, but he's not really like decked out in the gold like these guys are. Which is a bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, take strip down their gear, check them out. And uh, Lloyd's got his, you know, fancy frilly sword that he's had um, before. But he's also got a regular golden sword on his back. Um, a lot of gold swords in this set. We got everybody stripped down here to their base uh, figure looking. Um, base looking figure. I don't know how you want to phrase it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. These are all quite fanciful and very, very golden. Um, Lloyd here obviously has the most gold on it, as you can see. Um, it's very, very detailed. You know, I can imagine, though, easily enough they replaced the gold torso and the gold legs with green. And then he'd keep the green, uh, gray, the gold arms and just be given black hands like these and he would look just perfect and then we just need a cowl for him as well 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. No, no golden Lloyd, just golden Oni Lloyd. Uh, maybe he'll be in a, another set or something. But they definitely are treating the ninjas differently here. Um, because you have your original four, and then you have Lloyd, and then Nia comes back in the one set, although she's not technically a ninja in that. So I don't know what's going on with the story. And, uh, but we have our, all our core ninjas. They look really great, too. All that printing and, uh, I don't know. I think my favorite's Cole, but it also might be Zane, just simply because he's got, like, a very different patterning and stuff like these two have very similar design this one's kind of similar except it's got a strap there while Zane's looks a lot different um, with straps and other things going on there that might be his mechanical nature uh, showing through or something but taking them on the flip side and looking at the back we have their goofier faces oh except for Lloyd I must have yeah, count it backwards. But that's okay. And we had Zane, of course, does not have his have a face, but uh, you know the the backs of these, back of the torsos look really great, continuing the golden theme. Um, yeah, they look all three of them look great, and they got their symbols back there now. Lloyd's design definitely looks uh, a lot, quite a bit different than uh, the rest of them, but uh, yeah. He's definitely a different figure. So, uh, yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know what we're going to be getting next, but uh, these are definitely amazing. We've got everything assembled here. Um, we've already looked at all the figures. We have the dragon look at, but we've got one more thing to look at, which we'll look at first, which is this throne over here. Um, so we are going to sweep everybody away, because we are done with them, except for the Crystal King here, which we shall see how he looks on his throne. So, there he is, oh, let's, uh, just there, there we go, there is, here he is on his, with his throne. And, unfortunately, he can't, well, maybe he can let's see. Yeah. And the problem with his throne is just simply his weapons, which if you move him in the right position, he can sit on it there, and there you have it. Now, there's, uh, nothing too amazing about this throne. It's a throne. It looks very much like it's trying to be the throne of swords. Um, taking inspiration from uh, Game of Thrones uh, with all the weapons back here, all the golden weapons. The only one we're missing is the weird like dagger piece thing. Not even sure what to call it. Um, but yeah. It's got everything else on here, including our shirk and in the back, back here, um, making an interesting pattern. Uh, yeah, that's not much going on here, but it's kind of cool just to have a throne with all the golden weapons on it. That's what the back looks like, nothing too spectacular back there. And it works just fine. So, with that, let's give, move on to the dragon. We've got just the dragon here, but... Before I look all around at this guy, I should also bring in Lloyd over here. Although any ninja will do, or even a bad guy if you want. Uh, but let's. This guy does have a saddle on his back. Small little saddle place for you can set a character. So that's nice. Is it removable? Well sort of as you can see it's come actually in several different pieces so it's not something you can easily pull off but it's not really that distracting either it's rather small so we have our very golden dragon here and uh 
You can see he's quite a beefy boy. Though overall, I feel like the uh, the uh, Lloyd's uh, oh, what was it called? The Green Dragon from the Core Wave is actually bigger than this. Although I think this guy has a lot, definitely has a lot more pieces just by the piece count, but also by weight, there's he's much more dense um, with parts, smaller parts and stuff. Um, so uh, we have four different elemental heads, all individually posable, um, and they're pretty, pretty good at posing. There is, you know, a little bit of difficulty because you know you can only go so far left to right with the middle head when there's another one on the side, but you can spin them all the way around and rotate them. Um, no matter how you want to, <laughs> you can look upside down. Uh, but yeah, it uses uh, basically just uh, ball joints on all the the necks, and the mouths open up, and they use that double joint piece. So there's some, you know, if you want to give them a big overbite or something like that or an underbite you can do that <laughs> um, but or you know just use it to open and close no flames or tongues though but uh, there's definitely places inside where you could add those if you wanted to the uh, printing on the head is heads uh, plural are all very nice and we have two um, dual molded heads one in blue and one in, in yellow um, the other two are just solid gold, solid plastic gold, <laughs> uh, but they are painted all very nicely. Get this down. And I like how you build up the heads, even like the the heads are built up so that they all look different. As you can see here, they got some different. Uh, Trans transparent pieces on both the heads, even though they are the same exact head piece. The jaw is different, but the, the top head piece is the same. And uh, same goes for, you know, this guy uses the same jaw piece as the other one, but uh, he actually uses a jaw piece for his top head too, giving him a much bulkier look. And you can see some more gold pieces added here on top. Can give it a different shape. And he's even got these horns off the side that are built. So they did a lot to give each one of these a little bit more personality. And uh, besides showing just their element, uh, it's uh, pretty good. Now, this guy is very golden, as you can see. Um, as far as posability, we've got a twist joint here. Now there is a little bit of sideways movement if you want. Um, there's no elbow joint here. There is a wrist joint, which you definitely need that if you don't have the elbow joint. The uh, arm here only turns at an angle though. Um, so definitely need that sideways action you got going on with the front feet as well um, so that you can get them to stand flat-footed you know um, but yeah we got rotation there and in the back no knees they are bent though at 45 degrees or 90 degrees excuse me I think the front's more at a 45 uh, I think that's 45. That's more like a 135. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so these are at 90 degrees. You got the hips can splay out and in and rotate. Though I don't know how much you want them to stick out like that unless you want the dragon to get swamped flat. Um, and once again, ball joint on the foot, which is very helpful. Now there is a torso joint in here, which is kind of nice. Let's you do some 
not squats, uh, you know, torso. Well, anyway, torso movement. Now, it doesn't rotate or anything, but it does give you some nice movement there. And then you move back to the tail, which has multiple joints here. You got, and they're all click hinge joints. And this is at a permanent bend because this is a little like elbow macaroni piece, which I don't exactly like, but you can work around it if you want it to, to, to change direction. Um, personally, like I said, I would have rather had a strange straight and maybe put another joint in there. I don't know if you need quite as big a joint as this but you uh, put just put another joint in there um, so it can fully bend because if say you want to do this and you want to do kind of a you know you want to bend it down or something you're never going to get the full arc effect there with the stuff being bent the other way uh, but it's not terrible and uh, these also rotate this way so even though you get only one rotation here if you turn it this way you can get a, a sideways you know so you can do a, a tail swing um, which is important because you know you always gotta watch dragon's tails and the wings here they do not like flap from here or here or even there. They're in a, a permanent position. But you rotate this top part here and they open and close up. Which is kind of nice and the technique in that is really interesting how they did it. Um, very technical and te a lot of technic parts in there to get that to do that. and. It's not that they had to, but to do it in such a small space, I think that's why they did it that way. And But it has some very interesting movements there. So yeah, that is pretty much his posability. Now, looking here at the front, I love this, uh, the, the, the way they did these scales. They look great. And the nice golden pieces on the side are real nice. Um, arms are almost all golden. You got this blade that comes out of the back, but it actually covers up the elbow. Which, uh, let's see if I can see it. Yeah, this is what it looks like underneath. There's quite a bit there, but you can't see it because of that blade and the rest of the arm, um, which covers up the the uh, the underlying skeleton or whatever you want to call it better. Uh, really well. Um, you can see it inside here a little bit, but not too much. Now, I'm not a big fan of this, uh, the white with the gold. And I know the Ultra Dragons always got white, has been white from the beginning. I never understood why, especially since it's made up of all four dragons, with Lloyd kind of being the centerpiece. So you think that'd be green, but no, white... I guess because it's such a neutral color, but it doesn't, I, it's not bad with the gold, but I, I think it would look better maybe with a light green or something or a medium green, um, for like the trim and, and stuff, not for like the toenails. Those are fine white, you know, the claws and stuff, but yeah, th this is it before I say too much more, let's, uh, head back to the desk and uh, give this a final eval and give you my final thoughts on it as well. All right, we're back here at the get desk and I'll try not to get bitten by this dragon. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I'll give this my final re review and uh, or final uh, thoughts and uh, the final eval. Wow, dragons really got me upset. <laughs> I'm messing up my words. Uh, but yeah, Overall, I like this set. There's some nitpicky things and some more, uh, more less nitpicky things that I don't like about it. Uh, 
nitpicky thing is I don't like the white color scheme. And I mentioned that earlier. I know the Ultimate Dragon's always been white. So that's his gold and white. I understand, just don't like it. Um, my next big issue is with these wings. And I'll, I'll leave it at that because I'm going to talk more about that with the appearance. But yeah, I have problems with the wings. And a small issue with this this one piece here in the tail that, that's permabent. That's macaroni tail piece. Um, I don't know why they couldn't just put something straight there to work or something. Why they chose that. Um, you know, it doesn't look bad in general, but when you just want to go and pose it around and stuff, it starts making things awkward to move. Uh, other than that, the guy looks great. There's some great detailing. There's so much gold, and the gold pieces are, are used so appropriately to, to, to make it look well. And then there's the scale work on the back, or on the front, and some on the back here as well. Um, all the characters look great. Uh, actually, let's stop there and move into a, a final evaluation, starting with appearance. As I said, all this looks really great. Um, I'm the figures have all been amazing this 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 wave. Well, you know, except for maybe the four plus set there, but they all look great. This not Game of Thrones throne is is okay. I mean, it's, it's Game of Thrones so I'm only using the gold weapons. It's a neat idea, but the biggest issue is is uh, kids shouldn't be able, shouldn't even know what the Game of Thrones are and who are uh, this is more targeted to. Uh, but it's okay, because people even if they don't get the reference, it's it's fine. It looks fine. And it's a nice big throne for the Crystal King. Um, but, yeah. So, that looks fine. There's nothing amazing about it, but it, it looks okay. Dragon Self looks really good. And, despite my issues with the color scheme, it still looks really good. There's so much gold. I just... The white meat, I wish they'd done something a little bit different with and on top of that, the wings. Now, I don't mind the skeletal-like wings too much. The issue is when you get into here, the suddenly... It, it's not with the wings by themselves. It's the overall thing, I should say. Because the dragon and everything here looks very organic. Like, this could be a living, breathing creature. Yeah, it's got some armor on it, but it doesn't look like it's mechanical by nature. Until you get to the wings. The wings just do not work for it. Uh, it makes it worse to use all these Technic pieces and stuff in here. Um, yeah. So, basically with all those... May, may, basically the wings, but... Uh, with some of the other issues as well, like the color scheme and the weird twisty um, bent to the tail. Um, they weren't by themselves probably enough to give it. It's mainly the wings that I'm going to take a point off and give this a 9 for appearance. Um, yeah, it, it's still not terrible looking by any means. It's really cool looking. And the the dragon, for, I, I go forward, I still want to say that this is a really nice dragon. And if you take the wings off, it looks like a cool hydra. These heads are very well done. And like I said, this whole thing looks organic, and that includes the multiple heads. They fit in there really well. They move. You can pose them and look very organic about it. They look great. It's just the wings that really stand out with this thing. Um, so, as far as function, uh, 
the dragon pose as well. Yes, it doesn't have elbows and knees. That's okay. We can get over that. But the, the neck, the necks and the jaws and everything functions good up here. The tail functions well. Oh, by the way, if you had noticed earlier in the earlier, the, the, the main review, um, I had put the tail together wrong. Whoops. I uh, just switched the parts around and everything was fine. But it also helps hold things a little bit better this way as well. <coughs> but yeah, I fixed that. <laughs> uh, if you didn't notice, oh well. Nothing happened, nothing to see here then. Uh, but uh, I am... The appearance of these wings, I say, is a problem, and also really the functionality. Now, the 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 being able to open up and close like this is pretty nice, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's not bad, and there's nothing that they, they work fairly well. It does slip a little bit. <laughs> The, plastic, the rubber tire sometimes slips in there a little bit so it doesn't always move perfectly. Um, but this was a great functionality but it, it, the best one is really having a lever and having the dragon wings flap. And okay, so maybe you don't have the dragon wings flap. Just putting some kind of hinge system in here so we could move these up out of the way a little bit because they're, they're permanently stuck in this kind of angled out position yes they can close up and go back um, but it really could have used something like that now probably would have used some more design although I don't think it would need too much uh, based on what they had already designed here both the Lloyd's Green Dragon, I can't remember what it's, Ultimate Green Dragon? Something like that. Both that one and uh, Nia, the, the Water Dragon, both had flapping action. Now, Nia's flapping action wasn't as good as the, the Green Dragon, but it was still there. And the idea is you can hold the dragon and you can flap it with your finger. It's a very good play feature and functions is a good function. Uh, I really think they should have done something like that with this. Now I understand they're probably trying to do something different. They don't want all the dragons to look alike, but I'm sorry. Having flapping wings on a dragon is just perfect. Um, so the, the opening and closing wings are okay and there's good technique and how they did it which we'll talk about that in a little bit but it could have used something more and it's simply the back the back flapping um so i end up giving a function a nine because primarily not primary because of that really it, it, they need to do the the wings are the weakest part of this set um and fun well fun goes right along with that if you have flapping wings, this dragon would be a lot more fun. The, the the opening and closing, it would be great if you could implement both that and flapping at the same time. So it's flapping and opening and closing at the same time. Could be done. <coughs> it would definitely require a little bit more gear work and stuff. But that would add to the fun. And then there's the fact that this is a very very lopsided set. You have the dragon. It's the good guy's dragon. You have five dragon, or five uh, good guys. Four bad guys. Yes, you have the big um, king. And you've got his throne. Well, it's nice that we have a bad guy build, I suppose. But a, 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 a throne of weapons isn't going to do much. Ha! I shall beat you with my throne of weapons if I throw it at you. So the, uh, yeah, it's very lopsided here for a play. 
a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to take like tons of points off for it or anything, but one point, you know, isn't going to hurt it too bad. And uh, I was just saying those wings would help as well. Um, there's still a lot of characters here. It's one thing about the set, there are a lot of figures here. If it is a little bit lopsided, and there's still a good amount of villains, even if they're. But the fact that you have, so I, I like the the uh, Nia's mech a little bit more. Yes, you had Nia's big mech, that's part of the set, but they had a small build as well. And actually, I think the good guys, and bad guys, were perfectly even. I mean, this is only offset by one, which isn't terrible, um, but just the throne. A little bit better build would have been nice for this. Would it cost more? And we'll talk about cost here in a moment. But yeah, so I ended up giving Fun also a 9 for imbalance and really flapping wings. Dragons should have flapping wings, especially if they're this large. I understand the smaller ones might not have the space to put the, the gimmick in, although. <laughs> There was that one 4 plus set, that little tiny dragon, and he was just a piece of plastic, but it worked fine. You used your thumb and it made the dragon's wings flap. But uh, yeah, flapping dragon, flapping wings for dragons, always a plus. Um, now, as far as technique goes, there's some great stuff here. Um, the way the shaping of the whole entire body is. The use of all the gold armor and how that plays out. The technique to build the function in these wings. Very nice. The building of the head, the neck, and, and just the way it's designed. They don't feel like they're just slapped on there. Even though one might think so. But they, they, they aren't. And uh, yeah, technique got a 10. Hands down. Um... There's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, not really any bad stuff. I mean, the problems with the wings is not because they're built bad. It's just some choices that were made in how they were designed. I mean, you could still use this, this kind of mechanical type motion, but just cover it up and make it look more organic somehow. It would have helped if they used like a cloth wing and, and stuff like that, but it, that wouldn't necessarily that wouldn't be necessary <laughs> specifically and uh yeah that brings we average that up and we get a 9.25 averaging it out um we round up to the nearest half so it becomes a 9.5 which is the final um average score moving on to price the price was $149.99, essentially $150. And it had 989 parts, almost a thousand pieces. Uh, but you do the math and it comes to 15 cents per piece, which is obviously five cents over the standard. So it's on the more expensive side, but, but, there are a lot of expensive parts here. There aren't too many dual molded pieces. There are two heads, um, large dual molded. There's still smaller ones with the minifigures, but there's only that. But we see the gold. Gold is a more expensive part. It just is. It's different plastic. It's not yellow plastic. It's, it's slightly different metallic. It That is going to be more expensive parts. And there are some big parts, like all these dragon heads and the wing pieces. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of big pieces as well. So, and overall, this is a fun set. Like I said, it, it's got its weaknesses. There's some things that could make it better. Um, it's got a lot of figures as well that definitely adds to the value. So... Despite it, it being on the expensive side, I think it's okay. And I gave it a P for pass. It's definitely not a good price, but definitely is not a failure. Um, would I like to see it cheaper? Yes. The, the thing is, the set 
Although it doesn't have as many figures. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have as many figures. This is the dragon itself. Actually, I think feels smaller than um, Lloyd's Ultimate Dragon from the Core Wave, and but there's more pieces in this because this is heavier, so it's a much denser. There's less air gaps inside there, whatever. Plus, the multiple heads probably make it heavier as well. Uh, but overall, I feel like that dragon was bigger than this. But that dragon was only $70, $80, I think. I think $80. Um, and this is considerably more. So, you add the figures in, the specialized parts, and you're getting more of a value than that. Yeah, I think that set only had like th three, maybe four figures. I think it had two bad guys and two good guys. A lot more than this. Um, so yeah, I gave it a P for pass. That brings our final evaluation to a uh, 9.5 P. Uh, so it's a pretty good set. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. If you love dragons, definitely get it. Um, you know, put it on your wish list or whatever. Um, I know somebody who likes dragons. Uh, but uh, if you're not really into that and you want to build a dragon, I would go more for that core core um, dragon. And if you're not, you know, a big Ninjago fan and just have to have Lloyd's Golden Dragon, yeah. I, I would... Uh, settle for a cheaper Lego dragon like Lloyd's, which is really good in and of itself. It doesn't even have the flapping wing problems that this one has. But yeah, I, I don't recommend this for everybody. Um, if you're a big fan or you just really like dragons, yes, it's a decent set. If you can afford it, go ahead. If you can find it cheaper, definitely get it cheaper. Um, and hopefully it will go on sale and be cheaper at some point in time as well. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of this big guy. I, like I said, I like it. But, uh, and let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And please leave a comment. It helps the channel, even if you just stop and say hi. Uh, hi. Um, yeah. And, uh, as always... Check out links in the description for the set on the Lego set and a brick. It's also on Brick set. You can see more stuff there. Um, I usually post my videos there too, so it's kind of a roundabout thing. Um, so you can check those out if you want to purchase it from Lego. You can, or if you find, you know, look around. You might be able to find it cheaper. Um, I haven't seen them in stores yet, but I haven't seen. I've seen this wave in the stores. I just haven't seen the bigger sets in the stores yet. They're, they're probably coming. Uh, maybe closer to Christmas or something. They'll have them in there. Um, but, or I just might not have them in my local stores, which isn't surprising. Small town, small city. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Comments, do the like, the subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. And make sure you hit... Uh, the bell for notifications, but also check out my links to my Facebook and Twitter accounts. Follow me on there and you will get up-to-date notifications when my videos are out. Um, YouTube's not always trustworthy with that. They'll get them out eventually, but the, you don't know when. Um, so yeah, that's it for me here at the Creation Evaluation Station, reminding you that creativity is key.